What's going on everybody? So today we got a new video. We're gonna be working on a DD-15. That's the majority of what I work on. I have a cam frame, okay, that's leaking. This was actually a truck that was worked on at another shop. I'm not gonna say where, I don't believe in. Okay guys, so again, this is a cam housing. This is actually a damaged cam housing. Now the reason why it's damaged is because it was worked on at another shop. Again, I'm not gonna say where, I don't believe in trash talking or, or throwing shade on anybody, but that's the part number. It's a cam frame kit. I'm gonna show you what it comes with, but there's a few things you're gonna need in addition to that that does not come with the kit. One of the things you're gonna need is your fuel lines. This is the one that goes up from the high pressure pump up to the common rail. Again, these are one and done. So when you use them and you take them off, you cannot reuse them, okay? I don't care what the argument you have, I will not reuse them. It's just not gonna happen. Our fuel lines. Now again, you're gonna need a couple different fuel lines, the ones ending in 1710, and you're gonna need the ones ending in 1810. Now, the problem we have is they're very hard to come by right now. They're on a back order, special order. It, it's just a pain in the ass. It really is. I don't know what's going on with the supply chain, um, you know, but that's a different story for a different day. So again, 1710s, I should have the 1810s arriving shortly. If not, I'm gonna have to do something I don't wanna do and something I always tell you guys not to do and that's reuse the other lines, the 1810s, because again, if they don't have them, you don't have much of a choice, but I'm gonna show you what we can do and what we're gonna do to make sure that this is uh, done correctly. So let's go take a look at the truck and you'll see what hey I'm guys, there you go, brand new cam housing. Everything you need is gonna be in this kit with the exception of a few things. It's actually not bad what you're getting. Uh, the cost is pretty, it's up there. I think you're looking at about 2,000 bucks for the housing. It comes with your seven bridges or saddles, whatever you, whatever you wanna call it. It does come with the bolts. You're gonna need these bolts. Let's take a look right down the way. It comes with the bolts, it comes with the side bolts. Okay, so your hardware's included. It does come with the new cam position sensor. I would advise to put this on first before you start putting on the lines because it, uh, space does get very limited there. So just to give you a little heads up. It comes with your cam seals, all six of them. I'm sorry, injector fuel line seal, not your cam seal. It does come with a new cam seal. Now I'm gonna install this one, but I'm also gonna use some of the gasket eliminate from Detroit. I'm gonna show you how I do that. And it does come with the two additional bolts. The two additional bolts are the ones that I've mentioned in my other videos that are typically hidden back here behind the gear. So very important, when you set the housing, make sure you put those bolts in first before you put in your cams because the gears uh, they're gonna obstruct your view, and the last thing you wanna do is drop one of the bolts down into the gears. So, just to give you a heads up, and again, we're gonna take this thing apart, but I wanted to show you what comes with it. It's actually a nice deal. Oh, that's what does not come with it, is your common rail. Okay, you're gonna have to transfer your rail over, along with your, um, what would you call them, your straps, saddles, whatever they wanna refer to them, and your bolts. Those have to be torqued down, and I'll show you what the book says on those, just so you're not over, overdoing it. Uh, same thing, these have to be torqued and it's a very small torque, okay? Don't overdo it. I'm gonna show you what happens when you overdo it. I'm gonna show you exactly what happened to this truck. So, right, so here we go. DD-15 EPA-10. So this is gonna be a 2011, 2012, 2013. This is a Freightliner Coronado. Don't see too many of those and I do like them. It's a very nice classic look. So these are your fuel lines. Those are the seals. Obviously you're familiar with those. And the one that was the culprit was this one. Okay, the engine was rebuilt and again, it was done somewhere else. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock them or throw shade, but when you over tighten them or over torque them, the seals will leak because you're gonna strip out the housing. So you can either do Healy coil, that may work, it may not work. I personally don't like to go that route just because of the type of material we're doing or working with. So what I'm gonna do is actually get all of this stuff out of the way, get the air filter out, Get the valve cover out. We're gonna set the time. We're gonna make sure we're TDC one. I've showed you guys how to do that, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And then we're also gonna be replacing the engine harness, which is gonna be the MCM harness or sen uh, engine sensor harness. So that's what we got going for us today. Uh, yeah, a lot of fun. So we're gonna try and smash this out because this customer's gotta leave in about two, three days. So let's get going. Okay guys, so we are back. We took off everything that we needed to do as far as everything that was in the way, which again is gonna be your valve covers and your air filter and all that good stuff. So anyway, what I'm trying to do is get a better angle. Bear with me guys. All right, so if that works out, fantastic. Um, we do have our engine set to time. We are TDC one. 
You can see the timing marks there and you're gonna see the little triangle there. I marked it with white paint. I slipped up a little bit, but either way we are TDC1. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this entire thing apart. Start off with our injector harness, remove the front, remove the rear, and then we're gonna go ahead and take off our rocker assembly intake and exhaust, okay? Anyway, let's go ahead and get this done, get this started and go from there. So again, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do our harness. You're gonna need your, I think it's a T25. Let's see what it says here really quick. Yep, T25. So you're gonna use your T25, carefully remove those. My God, the guy that did this way overdid it. So you don't need to do it that tight. That's ridiculous, the fact that that person did it like that. I mean, Jesus Christ. Look at that shit, that's garbage. Anyway, I believe in doing things right, but man, that is way too tight. So again, do this by hand. Do not use your ratchet. Do not use any power tools. This way you can get a good feel for what's going on. Last thing you wanna do is damage an injector. Then you're gonna have to replace an injector. And the question is, who's gonna pay for that? So again, you're gonna repeat the process. You're gonna take this out. It's a T35, T35, T35. You're gonna need your Allen. Uh, let's see here, you have four points of contact. One, two, three, four, five. I take that back, five points of contact. So you take that apart, pull out your harness, do the same thing for the rear harness. And then we're gonna need our 12 point 10 socket, okay, 10 millimeter socket. Pull off the intake, you're gonna do the same thing for the exhaust side. Exhaust side is a little tricky, I've showed you guys how to do that. But anyway, let's go ahead and get this done. I'm gonna stop talking and let's go from there. All right guys, so I tried to do something fancy with the time warp and uh, make it a little bit faster for everybody, but that didn't work out very well. So we're just gonna go regular speed and fast forward it during editing. So again, you're gonna take your harness out. You're gonna need your five Allen. And that's pretty much gonna take care of that. So T25 and a five. Okay, once you do that, that'll be ready to go. And then you're gonna go ahead and pull that thing out. But I forgot to take this out for my engine brakes. So let's see here. All right, T25, blah, 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 T25. Hold that just in case you don't break anything. All right, let's go ahead and take this clip out. That we can leave up there. I'm gonna push this through and carefully, there we go. So we're gonna take that out, we're gonna slide that through and then we're all done, okay? So we're gonna repeat the same process as we did for the front and we're gonna do that on the rear. So for now, again on the rear, let's get this out of here. And I think here we have the same thing, one, two, three, four points of contact. So we have five points of contact on the front and four on the rear. So let's get that done, one, Let's go ahead and get the 10 mil. We're gonna loosen this all up. And again, I've done it in a video, so I'm just gonna do it again, just for, for uh, clarification sake, for safety sake. Start in the center and work your way out. Loosen, loosen, and kind of go left, right, left, right until it all comes out. This you can actually lift up with your hands. The other side's gonna be a little bit more difficult, but I'm gonna show you how to do all that right now. All right, guys, so half inch ratchet, adapter, 10 mil, 12 point and you're just gonna go and loosen this up. Now, typically I would say use uh, hand tools, don't use your power tools, uh, but we're gonna be replacing these, these anyway. Again, I showed you in the video that this is all gonna be new, all these little bridges or these saddles. So you can decide for yourself if you wanna use power tools or not. I don't recommend it. I kinda get, like to get a general feel of what's going on as far as what the person before me did or what's going on with the engine, maybe something stripped, and you're certainly not gonna feel that if you're using power tools. So. Should be good to go now here i'm actually going to use this it's not a whole lot of 
torque, so I'm not worrying about it. All right, guys, there you go. So we have everything loose. We have the center, so it's gonna be seven of them, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I typically don't like to take them out. What you can do from here is simply lift it up and out, put it somewhere where it's gonna be nice, clean, and away from dirt or dust. Then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, this side's gonna be a little more tricky because you have the springs on the engine brakes, the Jake brakes. So loosen them up, same thing. As it starts to lift, slowly get your hand in there. It's not gonna spring out and pop out, but just loosen them up, and as it starts to rise, remove the springs, and there you go. You're gonna pull that out, but you will need a tool to do that. Uh, at least I use a tool to lift up. I've showed you that one before. Um, you don't have to, you can actually do like some uh, plastic ties or zip ties, kind of keep it all together, but the problem is still lifting it up. So that's what the tool comes in handy for. So again, let me get a clean, clean spot to put this stuff away, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, so I got an area that I'm gonna put this down, and again, I'm gonna show you how easy this is to take out by yourself okay so what you're going to want to do is just simply up and out make sure they're all free see all right and that's it literally that's how easy it is lift it up all by yourself and again you're going to place it somewhere clean somewhere away so it will not get dirty all right guys so we are still here this is the tool that i use again i've showed you guys before in the video uh, I really, you can use it on both sides. The other side I just showed you, you don't need it. Uh, it's not that heavy. It's not that uncomfortable. Let me get this right here. But you're definitely gonna need it for this side on the exhaust side. So let's go ahead and get this exhaust side going. Uh, let's see, what do we need here? 10 mil tools. And here we go again. So. Get our little electric tool. He's completely out. You will actually need to remove them in order to get this tool in, you're gonna need three points of contact, right? In the center, left, and the right. So what I typically like to do is just get these out. You cannot mix them up because these are actually very different than the intake one. So we're gonna pull all seven of them out. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to install the tool, lift it up, and uh, we'll go from there. So we're moving along pretty good. Typically a job like this is about a 10 to 12 hour job uh, plus or minus, you can actually get it done faster, again, depending on your skills and depending on, you know, what, you know, really if you're, if you're pretty good at it or you do it, you get enough practice, I should say. That's really what it's all about is practice, practice, practice. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get this all out of the way. Let's get our new cam housing ready to get installed pretty soon. So I'm excited. So if I can get most of this done today, I can finish this up job, this job by tomorrow and I'll be about a day ahead, which I'm really looking forward to that if it's possible. But, you know, nice and easy. So the tool sits in there. And again, don't forget your little springs in here, your little friends. You can lift up and then make sure you grab them and then take them out. So there are seven of them. Again, seven of these you're gonna need to remove. If it falls, don't worry. Usually you can just catch it right inside. Uh, you may need a magnet, but for the most part, you should be okay. There we go. So we got three, four, five, six. So we actually have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh yeah, six in the right. Seven. One, two, three, So there we go. We have seven. Clear out. And let's get our tool installed. Lift and pull. Okay. So there we go. Start off with the center. You're gonna tighten that down. Put 
push down and then you're gonna just tighten it down and it will grab in there. So it's pretty much ready to come up. This is where the fun part is. I like the Coronado because you have all this extra room. So again, all you're gonna do is make sure you have, I use a little bit of rag so I don't slip. There you go, up and out. So there you have it guys. Now again, I typically don't like to put things on the ground, but because space is limited and I've got a lot of engines going on, I've got a lot of space taken up. So anyway, let's keep going. 